me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the fifth generation of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, code name WL. This is the key of the vehicle. Says Jeep right there. This is to unlock the car. This is to lock the car. And this is to open the boot of the vehicle, which is actually operational even when the vehicle is on. That's kind of cool. Straight away, let's open the engine bay, and there you can see it's a Chintu Mintu engine. It says Jeep Turbo right there. You can see the functioning right now. And you know what? India is the only country in the world where this particular engine is being sold. So this is like a India-specific engine, which we'll talk about when we are driving, of course. This is where the washer fluid goes. There is insulation here, and something written about weights, which Americans obviously do because they're very conscious about weights. Jokes aside, it has the Jeep logo right here. Lot of tech. Like there's a front camera here, along with the spray. The so spray works against gravity to clean the camera. How cool is that? The seven slide grill, which is a typical Jeep affair with chrome surrounds, of course. Chrome here, lower down, you get front parking sensors. This is the panel for the radar for ADAS functions, of course. And the ground clearance is actually quite good. You know what? The bonnet has become flatter. It's an evolutionary design when compared to the older Grand Cherokee, which I drove in India here itself, but the SRT version, which unfortunately hasn't come. Anyways, you can see this chrome almost everywhere. Full LED lights, which look beautiful. This is the DRL, which also doubles up as the indicator. This is the fog light. I'm not too sure how effective is the fog light, but anyways, this car has got cameras almost every possible way, or rather, every possible way. <laughs> What am I saying? Anyways, here you can see that is the rain sensor and the camera for the lane keep assist. And this particular windshield is an acoustic laminated windshield to prevent noise coming inside. And these are solar control glasses. That's also amazing. From the side, you can see the length is almost five meters. It's actually closer to 4.9 meters than five meters. The wheelbase is almost three meters, closer to 2.9 meters, I believe. Says Grand Cherokee here, and the wheels are typical in terms of design to a Grand Cherokee. So that's something which Jeep has mastered: the design of these alloy wheels. 265 50 20 is the size of the tires. No air suspension for India, unfortunately. Squared wheel arches, and because the lights are on, this reflector is also on. Huh? Quite weird. Anyways, you get a camera here because obviously it gets a 360 degree camera. You get passive entry for all the doors as well as the boot. And this car is available in a three seater option as well, which is known as the Grand Cherokee L. That one actually has a 300 mm longer length. along with 150 mm longer wheelbase so that's something which is not coming to india because jeep thinks that two seats two row of seats are enough 4x4 written here limited is the trim level and again from the rear don't say it looks like the brezza but you know slimmer lights uh, they really evolved it now because this is in black color you can't really see it gets a floating roof appearance and that chrome treatment as well these are functional i believe you get a shark fin antenna there Check this out. All the generations of the Cherokee, right there. So lot of Easter eggs. In fact, the attention detail is very nice. Here you can see the cap for the valve, which also has Jeep written on it. Rear discs, of course. That's like basic. Yeah, Faisal, come on. You get chrome here. Rear parking sensors. This is the reverse camera, which also has a spray. And this is the top camera for the rear view mirror, which also has a spray. So when you use it, this whole thing becomes completely crazy wet. You get a high-mounted stop lamp, sort of a spoiler. It says FCA here. Don't know why it needs to say that. Now I don't know why this design treatment is given, but it's okay. It works. This is the indicator of the vehicle. Faisal Khan's fingers of truth, desperately hunting for the exhaust, which is actually hidden right there. Yeah, it just gets a. one exhaust pipe you can see the underbody you know what the grand cherokee has always been a monocoque when people were giving body on frame jeep decided no we will come up with a monocoque chassis only 
Now, uh, lower down, obviously, reverse lights and all that. Let's open the boot. I press this twice. There opens the power tailgate. Now, this is a massive boot. It's like, what, 1,072 liters or something of that sort. It's huge. You know why it's huge? Because this car was designed to be a three-row car, which is the Grand Cherokee L. So, here, you obviously get a lot of space. Jeep carpeting. Okay, there's a subwoofer here. There's a hook here. 12 volt charging socket you can actually twist this yeah and then pull this out to open the fuel lid in case it's not opening and this is the button to close the boot in case uh, you don't want to push it down like that or use the key you can press this button here honestly it should have been somewhere here because initially you're hunting for the same some storage space here now because the boot is so big they've actually given it a spare wheel now spare wheel is not an alloy it's smaller size it's actually 245 65 18 there is the jack i have no clue where the where rose is but there's the towing hook of course and there is obviously the warning triangle now you get a parcel shelf here uh, which is not the easiest to operate there it is i have put it back and let's just remove it right now now i was showing you all the models are shown right here it looks better from the inside it says airbag here so it's got a massive curtain which goes all the way to the front because this guy's got eight airbags now let's just shut this by just press this button and there it shuts yeah it is very slow it's unbelievably slow i don't know why it takes so long for this to shut but there it's finally shut anyways here you can see willies nice easter egg there's an easter egg here as well because you see willies there too yeah check that out amazing right it needs minimum 95 octane to function properly anyways good luck with that let's open the rear door now door pockets are decent sized at the rear nice white stitching here every person on every door can actually unlock and lock the car which is kind of nice one touch up and down there's a sun blind here which is manually retractable of course floor is not completely flat and i've actually put the car cover here which i will just flip it like oh my god it will not fit in only how do we put it back uh, i got an idea okay let's put it there we can actually recline the seat like this Okay, yeah, seat reclines like that. If you want to increase the boot carrying capacity, push it there and we put it back up. Now this is upright. Now I have to actually push it. Yes. Now it is completely reclined. So nice recline angle. You just have to pull this lever. Isofix child seat mounts. You can see the headrest also is reclined. So I just push it like this and it's back into place. There's a cup holder here, rather two cup holders in the center armrest. And as soon as I get inside, I realize that legroom and knee room is good, but could have been better. Under thigh support is not the best. Scooped out seat bag, magazine holders, space for keeping your phone, AC vents placed here. Two USB charging sockets, two USB-C charging sockets. And there is a laptop charging port, heated seats for rear passengers. Both the passengers get that option. And height, adjustable seat belt, says airbag here, says airbag here. Microphone on the top, handle along with a hook light placement there dashboard actually looks quite nice but the thing is lot about this car is very similar to other jeep models like the meridian and all so that differentiation could be a lot better but almost all the jeep models look very similar so that's a bit of a bummer tweeter speaker yeah the regular bits anyways let's get outside now you've got this beautiful wood treatment right there let's shut the doors it feels very robust in the way it has been made now why am i getting in here Firstly, the biggest USP is that there's actually a screen right here. Yeah, there is actually a screen which I will turn on. So it has a privacy screen which the driver cannot see. Only person sitting in here can see. You can control the audio video and there's an HDMI as well so that you can actually connect your Xbox and play with it. You can do navigation devices. You can get into the camera view too. It's a bit slow. There's the front camera, rear camera and all. I press this button, nothing really happened. So this system could be a little bit more fluid, of course. The glove box is lockable. It's decent size, it's not that big. I don't think it has a cooling function either. Now let's get out. I love the way the treatment has been done. You know, the car has gone real upmarket now. In fact, if you look at it, they are towing hook is there, but some models have like different type of towing hooks as well. So like depending on the model you opt for, things can be very different. Now, the thing is that both the front seats get electric adjust, but the driver actually gets memory function. So you can see the seat is actually moving now. The steering is also moving. Steering also has memory function, which is kind of nice. This is an eight-way adjust, both for the front seat, eight-way electric adjust, which is quite nice. The outside rear view mirrors get the heating function as well. Nice wood. This is the memory function switch. These are the controls for the outside rear view mirrors. And these are actually the controls for the power windows. Meanwhile, door pockets are big enough at the front. Says Alpine here. 
get a proper dead pedal right there this is the electric parking brake which auto engages and uh, this is to open the hood of the vehicle these are the controls for the headlights it's got i think high beam assist or something of that sort so it can switch between low and high beam depending on the driving situation seats are actually nice and comfortable it doesn't get massage but gets cooling and heating as well so let's get inside before that let me show you there's some buttons here so these buttons actually are for increasing the volume and the on the other side those buttons are to go to a next track or come back to a track because there's not enough space on the steering wheel to control all that so that's the reason they have done that now first things first we are actually going to be opening the sunroof so i press this button there yeah and there opens the sunroof now thing is it is quite big okay it will open till here i press it once again it will open further look at the size of this it's insanely huge that's amazing right i love it and then the thing is that you will see airbag is written somewhere there airbag is written somewhere here also yeah there it is so it's got eight airbags six are obviously like two here front one full curtain right there one full curtain on the right side as well and then two knee airbags one here and one there so eight airbags that's kind of crazy right now thing is this does not slide there's some storage space here and there's more storage below here as well but you know what some cheap and hard plastics lower down so scratchy plastics that could have been a lot better without a doubt here you get a mirror along with a light same is the case here as well you get a mirror along with a light oh this is a decent size not really that big on the driver side also you have a handle to hold on to again multiple microphones so that your meetings go well <laughs> anyways the thing is that uh, this center console is quite big and then lot of color play wood leather double stitching here and there and plastic to scratchy one piano black full of fingerprints this is the engine start button electric adjust for the steering wheel of course and the steering wheel has a few buttons now these are actually the buttons to control that screen these are the buttons for the adaptive cruise control system so yes you can actually decide a lot of things here again adas related functions because this panel will work for the adas system now this is an auto dimming mirror but when you flip it it turns into a camera that's so freaking amazing so there's a screen here there's a screen here there's a screen here there's a screen here there's a screen there so many screens yes that is the heads up display which is a 10 inch screen and it shows you a lot of data like adas functions lane departure warning as well as navigation and audio as well okay now the paddles are a bit too small these are the controls for the indicators these are the controls for the wipers it has got rain sensing wipers it has got automatic headlights let's use the wipers right away okay there is so much spray on offer the wipers are really very nice something you would expect these are the controls for the lights on the top these are the controls for the sunroof of course and there is a sunglass holder here obviously that's important right now the thing is that they have put this screen which is a 10.1 inch screen which uses the u connect system which is the fifth generation system and it has got gps navigation it is actually a very slick system because it's got plenty of information so it's got navigation which will not react to me whenever i press it uh, and radio media all that is there obviously it's got apple car play which is wireless android auto is also there so i can get into the audio system in fact let's do one thing let me play an audio right away audio quality is actually very nice nine speaker system with a subwoofer as well this is alpine globally though they have another level of audio system unfortunately that's not offered in india here you can get into the seat settings that is the steering heating ventilation heat and all for the various functions in fact there are physical buttons here so here i can turn on the cooling for the driver seat i can turn on the heating as well and this is the heating for the steering wheel and same is there for the co passenger so they have given physical buttons physical controls which is nice and these are all the controls for the air conditioning and you can turn off the screen as well and this is for volume and this is to go to a next track and all so that's actually nice they've actually gone ahead and given physical control big thumbs up to jeep for that now obviously it's a jeep so it will have sort of a compass there this is actually the navigation then you can get into phone and all now there's so much information here you can like tweak whatever you feel like including all the various functions for adas like aeb automatic emergency braking active lane management park sense front park sense volume then driver drowsiness detection blind spot alert which obviously comes on the mirror and tire fill assist it's got tire pressure monitor as well the best thing is that there are some buttons here on the top also so you can turn on and off this screen from here now you can't see the screen because obviously it's here i mean i'm seeing it from this side so it's privacy screen this is to turn on and off the parking sensors yeah this is for the hazard light this for traction control this for lane departure warning and this is for the stop start system the ac vents are like really very slim now nice leather treatment here so pretty awesome screen now the thing is this is for the auto hold function this is for the drive mode selector the sand mud snow auto and sport 
Now it doesn't have a rock mode because that is a mode which is reserved for the trail hawk model only. This is the gear selector which has this beautiful knurled finishing. In fact, there are some dummy buttons here because here are buttons in the models with air suspension to increase or decrease the ride height of the car, which is missing here. Now, piano black, this doesn't open so easily. There is a wireless charging pad. Again, look at that. Two USB-C and two regular USB charging sockets. HDMI port which has passenger because it will connect to the passenger screen and a 12 volt charging socket as well. So that's quite practical. I like it. Now I need to do one thing, I need to come here and get into the surround camera system. It's not very fluid, there it is. Okay, 360 degree camera, here front camera, rear camera, side camera, front camera, all those cameras are there. And then uh, this is the top view camera, which I can see from here as well. And this is the front camera. If I press clean camera, there you can see there's a spray which is coming to clean the camera. It's quite amazing. In fact, let me actually get into the rear camera views, which is this one, of course. Okay, and now I'm going to use the rear wipers. And when I do that, you can see water is coming here. Let me do the top camera as well. And then you can see water is coming there. So it does waste a lot of water in cleaning all the screens because this car is meant to go off-road. And that is where it is definitely excelling. Camera quality is good and multiple functions you can see right here. So yeah, it's loaded with too much information, which can get confusing, which brings me to this screen. Now, this is a 10.25 inch TFT screen. It's similar to what we have seen on other G models that shows you the driver assist function functions and then I can go into various functions like I can see so many things like what is the fuel efficiency like yeah that is the fuel efficiency and I can browse through a lot of information like various temperatures what is the tire pressure and a seat belt unbuckled and whatnot it's like crazy loaded but thankfully it is very easy to see it because you know what everything is in a very nice menu in fact it also shows me what is a tilt angle and blah 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 so kind of cool and nice so I definitely like the screen in fact I can also see various information here so if I get into vehicle and then I can get into off-road pages here it's showing me gauges i can see vehicle dynamics i can see what is the pitch and roll and oh my god isn't that absolutely crazy amount of information i think it's a definite information overload the horn the horn is nice let me show you there is actually a ashtray right here because the cigarette sign is there twin cup holders are there as well and uh, yeah, I was going to turn off the car. So here we turn off the car. There it says, check rear seat. Jeep logo comes here and then it vanishes. Let's actually turn on the car again. And there it says Grand Cherokee quite nicely and makes this sound as well. And yeah, let's just shut the car. Okay, let me get out. Actually, I want to get some air inside. It's super duper hot. The problem is, okay, it says lights on. If the hood is open, it tells me all that. So that's kind of nice information. In fact, Let's just get inside and there it shows Jeep here since 1941. Alpine is the audio system supplier. So we get into reverse. As soon as I do that, it shows me rear parking system, like the park sense and rear braking assist is off. So I think it has got cross traffic alert as well. It automatically turns on the ventilation. I don't know why. So anyways, again, we will shut the car. It says get into parking. It will automatically get into parking and we shall get out. Thing is, I was expecting that with the key, I'm able to open all the windows. No, it doesn't happen that way. Unfortunately, I really expected that to happen. A lot of information it says FCA India here, tire pressure recommendation, says airbag rider as well. And it's just going to keep buzzing for no reason. Now, since I've used the water fluid, washer fluid, whatever, water on the camera, you see, there it is actually dirtying the car. It really dirties the car very badly at the rear which is a bit of a bummer because I had to get the car washed. Look at this. It's a full bath this car has had. Anyways, let's start driving right away. Right, we are all set to go which means first and foremost we need to turn off the air conditioning i need to turn off my ventilated seat also let me turn on this screen now that you can see it but still why not anyways we straight away get into drive i get into sport mode here for the drive mode select obviously i turn off traction control traction control is off and here we are actually going to get into something interesting like off-road pages pitch and roll it will show you not that it's going to make much of a difference anyways uh, this screen also i need to change so i'm just going to get into the bigger display so that you can see that as well this we will flip okay there's someone following me is that weird for someone standing right behind stuck together 
Anyways, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off, revving the motor and off we go. Okay, it did not launch. You know why? Because it always automatically engages the parking brake as soon as I put the car in park or anything of that sort. Revving the motor, revs till two, three, three and a half and off we go. Upshifts before 6000 RPM, so it's not a high revving engine as such. Performance is decent, I would say, but I can feel the roll already. It rolls quite a bit and the steering is not very direct. It does weigh up, but then you know what? It's also fighting with the lane departure warning system and that's the reason I feel a bit of a hesitance. By the way, it has got a dual zone climate control air conditioning system. It's got ambient lighting, LED ambient lighting, which obviously I cannot see in the day. And uh, obviously, a lot of features I keep forgetting because this car is loaded with so much. But right now we are driving the car, so let's talk about the engine. This is an India specific engine. This car is powered by a 2 litre 4 cylinder engine which is actually having no electric assist yeah it's not having any electric assist that's the reason this engine which is part of the Stellantis group's global medium engine is producing just 272 PS of power which comes at 5200 rpm plus or minus around 100 rpm and the torque output is 400 newton meters which comes in at 3000 rpm now these numbers are okay they are not that great they're not that bad but when you factor in the weight of this car which is almost 2100 kgs you're like hmm it does weigh quite a bit in spite of the fact that the hood and the tail gate is actually made of aluminium to cut down on weight still it is a heavy car and then because there's a big turbocharger here initial lag is definitely there so you have to deal with that in terms of city driving so drivability is not the best because of the initial lag but mid-range is really very strong it pulls nicely in the mid-range because that is where the meat of the power band is and then the top end now it firstly doesn't rev too high and then it becomes very vocal as well so in a sporty way you can say that now this is mated to an 8 speed automatic gearbox sourced from ZF it is a torque converter unit of course which is uh, actually decently quick with shifts it's not very urgent but it's smooth enough and gives you the right shifts at most of the times and then I can click on the paddles and get into manual mode and once I do that now it will not shift unless and until I decide to do so so that's also a good thing here look at this yeah all the way under 6000 rpm yeah 5800 rpm red line that is like diesel territory this cluster now always keeps dancing you can see that car is following me it's kind of weird but anyways performance is not that great it feels underpowered this car weighs a lot and the engine doesn't produce too much power did i just tell you that this engine is solely for india yes you know why because the same engine with electric assist rather a plug-in hybrid is what is sold globally and that obviously boosts power by i think almost 100 horsepower to 375 horsepower somewhere around that and the torque output to 637 newton meters that has a 17 kilowatt hour battery pack and, in, and an electric only range of around 40 to 50 kilometers depending if you're in us it's 40 kilometers if you're in europe it is 50 kilometers because obviously they have a different way of measuring how much it can go anyways that is absolutely needed here because of a heavy car with turbo lag with that battery the electric assist giving you full torque at zero rpm you can actually fight with that turbo lag so drivability will be good but here drivability is not that great solely because of that okay again red line at 5800 rpm does 110 kilometers per hour in third gear and honestly there's no sense of me driving in manual mode so here i've clicked on the paddles which are very cheap and small like, like they're so small now i end up pressing the buttons behind so they have put buttons for the volume control and all behind now so i end up hitting those by mistake because the paddles are like really very small and 0 to 100 kilometers per hour will come under 10 seconds i'm sure top speed is around 190 kilometers per hour it's a heavy car so it's not very spritey and that's the reason why they had to give it a huge fuel tank of 82 freaking liters because the fuel efficiency is between five and a half to eight and a half kilometers per liter depending on your driving style it gets a bit bouncy so this car does not get air suspension in india globally it does get air suspension which uh, we are missing out on unfortunately so it's running on steel springs which has a good ride actually initially there's this firmness but as you increase the speed it becomes flat however i cannot deny that there's some amount of bouncy feel now the profile is big because of which it feels very rugged and it annihilates almost anything in its track you know bad bumps big bumps anything yeah the car just glides through it does bounce a bit though so there's some amount of pitch and roll as well because our roads are not smooth and that's where this car struggles a bit obviously it has this height and then you know it's relatively very easy to drive you don't expect this car to be so freaking easy to drive it's unbelievably easy to drive this car like the steering effort is quite light and then in spite of the size and the body and the weight and all you don't feel much of that at all it just quite an easy car honestly i really enjoy the feel because firstly you're sitting so high up and then okay pulls strongly huh? once you pick up pace it does pull strongly in the mid-range 
now that lane departure warning sign is coming here it's coming there it's almost everywhere and these expansion joints can be heard inside so it's not the smoothest experience in that regard now globally obviously that hybrid engine a plug-in hybrid basically this engine with hybrid assist results in better fuel efficiency reduced co2 emissions better performance and whatnot but at a higher price of course and that's the reason they did not get it to india because you do not get any tax benefits by getting a hybrid engine so that's something which jeep actually missed out on because obviously india is dominated by diesel engines and diesel is not offered by jeep anywhere with the grand cherokee because they have two other engines oh, that that the other hybrid motor is actually known as the 4xe i don't even know what that means and then there's a 3.6 liter pentastar v6 engine and uh, unfortunately there's no track hawk yet a track hawk in the last generation was producing an absolute mind-blowing 707 horsepower from the 5.7 liter hemi v8 motor unbelievable 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds that's and i kid you not that is faster than the Lamborghini Urus. Okay, we are going to come to a halt, which means brake test, and here we go. Yeah, it it does not stop straight. It does move around quite a big under heavy braking. So brakes are not that impressive because it does skid a bit, and I'm just going to come to a halt here. And I'm again scared. This compass is right on my ass. What's wrong? Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off, revving the motor, and off we go. I think something flew behind. Oh, we are in manual mode. <laughs> there, now I've got into auto mode. So basically it has this quad dot track 4x4 system which has a brake lock differential and then obviously we've got select terrain, uh, these drive modes which basically alter the engine and the gearbox and probably the steering wheel as well, which is by the way an electric power steering and being an EPS, it's very easy. Okay, it's direct, it's fast enough, it weighs up also, but that body roll is evident. It's just too much body roll. By the way, this car has got connected car tech as well, which is obviously something you would expect at this price point. It's got a slew of ADAS functions. So if you've got blind spot monitor here, which you will see, you can't see that mirror, so I'm not going to show you there anyways. So blind spot monitor is there, then it has got automatic emergency braking for both pedestrian as well as cars, and then forward collision warning. Of course, we've got adaptive cruise control because there are a lot of buttons for the same right here. And that's not all. This car also has uh, reverse cross traffic alert, I think. And uh, it has also got uh, intersection assist or something of that sort where it can automatically brake at an intersection. And then, yeah, brakes are actually good uh, when you apply at a speed and don't come to a halt. When you're coming to the last 20% of stopping now, that is the time when the tires, they offer grip, but there's a nose dive and there's this skidding and all that happening, which is a bit weird in the way the whole braking system performs. So that's something which could definitely be better. You see, yeah, the roll is absolutely unbelievable in this car. There's so much roll. Suspension is definitely on the stiffer side, lower speeds, but then it just doesn't feel like a proper SUV to drive. It's just too comfortable, too soft, too luxurious. So the driving feel, which the Grand Cherokee was known for, that has been reduced dramatically just in the interest of giving us comfort luxury ease of driving and quality probably but then i'm not complaining because a lot of people will actually like it those people who want hardcore stuff there is definitely the wrangler still on sale and they have like seven trims of this car on offer globally in india we just have one which is the limited and this is the first time the grand cherokee has been made out of the us yes all the cars are produced in North America, but this one is actually made in India, assembled via the CKD route. And that's the reason prices have become a little bit more aggressive when compared to before. The price of this car is around 92 lakhs, 20,000, 92.2 lakh rupees, which seems aggressive from Jeep's point of view, but still is on the expensive side because obviously it misses out on a lot of features. And the competition is very different and difficult as well because the competition comes from German companies. So that's somewhere they, they have to be a bit alert of how they're going to manage all that. Now, like I was telling you, ADA systems, every Everything present in this car, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, all that, like that's a good thing because Audi does not offer the full suit of ADAS functions, Jeep does, which is quite nice. I like the way I can see the car here. Okay, bump, big bumps and all, you can feel the wheels are also very big. Globally though, you can get 21 inch wheels, you can get bigger wheels. I think 20s are fine with 50 profile tires. I mean, at least it gets the job done. Why is this compass again behind me? Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, and off we go. Every time I accelerate like mad, the car cover just flips itself. Now it has got active noise cancellation as well. That's the reason why it's kind of silent. And the engine is also refined lower down. Obviously when you push it hard, then it becomes vocal past 4,000 RPM. I'm coming to a corner, which means I should pray. But actually, you know, they put a strut brace up front to make it more rigid by 125% 
does it help? I'm not too sure. It runs on a multi-link suspension, both at the front and the rear. So a lot of effort has gone into making this car a lot more comfortable, and I think they have achieved it to a great extent. The only thing is they've robbed that feel of a Grand Cherokee to a certain extent, and I'm sure people wouldn't mind it. Only I hope that they give a more powerful engine in India. Obviously, we need that hybrid because fuel efficiency is something which is quite important, right? Now, of course, it is running on an FCA platform. It's a new platform in this car, and uh, it's very different from earlier. Platforms earlier, the Grand Cherokee was also underpinned by Mercedes platform. Remember, Chrysler specifically cannot stay alone; they just cannot stay alone, so they keep marrying people. So remember, once there was Daimler Chrysler when Mercedes and Chrysler had come together to form this thing. Okay, taking a U-turn not a difficulty at all. None of that gimmicky rear wheel steering. None of that is actually there in this car. Probably they don't need it as well. So that's the thing that it's running on a new platform, which is just so much better. It's a monocoque platform sourced from FCA, and you know what? The Grand Cherokee, since its launch in 1993, which is five generations and 30 years, has always been on a monocoque platform. It has never been a body-on-frame. And in those times, people were offering body-on-frame, but no Jeep was like we will always offer a monocoque platform because of the advantages like lightweight, better handling, better ride. Little bit more costly, of course, but then that's how they thought about it. And honestly, it really works. Uh, the Grand Cherokee is a very popular car globally as well, and mainly in the US, it sells very well. That's the reason they don't have a diesel because US is a very petrol-centric market. By the way, they sold the SRT version in India, the previous gen model, and I had actually driven it, and it was amazing. It was just like next level because so much performance, so much grunt. It was very nice. Horn is also quite good, actually. I like it. And around the corners, I can feel so much roll. Now, obviously, since uh, we are talking about a car which costs almost 93 lakhs, I have to get the competition into the picture. So, one is the Audi Q7, and the other is the Volvo XC90. Both of them are actually seven seaters. This is the five seater. They did not get the seven seater. In comparison, the Audi is around seven and a half lakhs more expensive. Meanwhile, the Volvo costs 1.15 crores, but it's a hybrid, so it's much more expensive. But obviously, it's more frugal, but it's not that exciting. And then it's just too much focused on safety, but. The price is 23 lakhs more, which is quite a lot. The X5, which is the best car in the segment, is priced similarly, so two and a half lakhs more for the 40i. But the X5 is also available with multiple variants and also available with a diesel engine, which is the real USP. And then there is the GLE, of course, and the GLE is also quite a good car and very popular in the segment, quite a seller as well. But it's only available with diesel engines now, so there's no petrol option in the GLE, and uh, obviously the prices are. Way more for the six-cylinder, and that is the real problem. You're buying a four-cylinder engine car. You pay a little bit more, you can get a six-cylinder engine car, and that is really food for thought. And why is this compass behind me again? Just don't understand why is this guy following me? I, I break, he stay breaks. I stop, he stops. What's wrong, dude? Just stop right now. Enough is enough. Okay, let's see what he's up to. I'm going to try and trick him and see if he still continues to follow me. Hmm. Okay, let's get into the accessory gauge. Not that it helps because nothing moves as such. I put on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. There, the car turns on because it has got stop start system as well. Revving the motor, hazard lights off, and off we go. So basically, Cherokee actually means people of different speeches, uh, which is. Technically named after some community in the U.S. where a lot of people were talking in different type of languages. I think I'm not too sure, but it does definitely means people of different speeches. Firstly, and secondly, I realized that the GLE actually costs nine lakhs more than this car, almost a crore, maybe more than a crore, one point zero two crores or something of that sort for the four cylinder model. For the six cylinder, it's a lot more expensive. And now I'm finally going to tell you why is that compass on my ass? So basically, what happened now? Uh, that person not stalking me. That person is supposed to follow me. So that person is from Jeep India itself, and this car obviously belongs to Jeep India. So what they told me is that we are happy to lend you the car for a review. However, our driver will follow you all the time. And then I was wondering why. And then when I read further, it said that uh, since we have only two cars in India, one for Mumbai and one for Delhi journalists, we cannot afford for the car to get damaged. So we don't want you to to do any sort of off-roading. Although this car is made to do off-roading, please don't do any off-roading. Please don't do any drifts or skids or water splashes, which could damage the car in any way. And that guy's responsibility is to follow me and make sure I don't do any of that. So there was a similar requirement. I mean, from Land Rover as well. When uh, they gave me the Range Rover, but uh, they never sent anyone to follow me, and obviously I complied because I know that cars get damaged off-road, and I'm not the only person who realized that. You can see there is the blind spot monitor ringing. So 
I'm not the only person uh, uh, who feels that cars can get damaged when you go off road because obviously you're uncertain of the terrain. Everybody who buys such a car realizes that, and that is the problem with the USP of this car. The USP of this car is now it's become luxurious, it's become comfortable. But at the end of the day, this is a car which is very rugged and very capable off the road. But how many of you are actually going to buy a Grand Cherokee and be like, oh my God, my expensive car, let's take it off road? None of you. No, 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 no. So that blunts the point of buying this car only for bragging rights. At the end of the day, if you can't really take an expensive car off road, why would you buy it in the first place? But then it's all about bragging rights. And if you do have balls of steel, you would probably Probably think and consider that I should probably take my car off road. And if you're so off road centric, maybe buy the Wrangler, which is also cheaper. So it's a bit of a dilemma here. It's a bit of a confusion for me, honestly. That rich people buy cars like this and the Range Rover and the G wagon to drive on road and never take it off road. So what is the point of all this four wheel drive? Now, obviously, four by two is also available in this car globally. In India, we have got standard four wheel drive. And when we have four by four globally and four by two as well, I mean, which means a lot of people want to save money in terms of fuel cost will opt for the 4x2 and still have the Grand Cherokee swag because remember one thing 4x2 is lighter in terms of weight so fuel efficiency also gets boosted and then uh, it has better performance as well like lighter weight of course and traditionally it's rear wheel drive 4x2 I think and then otherwise it's 4x4 which is powering all the four wheels and it's like a full time four wheel drive system it's telling me stay in lane I'm in lane dear if I go beyond the lane I would be off-roading right now and the person in the compass would come and kill me and on that disappointment it's time to end thank you so much for watching if you like this video make sure to give the thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel now I should try to get rid of him and here we go and I can't because that is a compass diesel the surprising part is that Jeep only sells a Meridian with a diesel engine because they know that most people buying a car up of 10 lakh rupees want a diesel engine yet they sell the Grand Cherokee with a petrol engine obviously they have no option because there is no diesel in this car globally which is unfortunate and with the competition having diesel the X5 is still my favorite car in the segment and with the LCI going to arrive soon enough well it's just gonna get better bye bye